What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Show checking back in with another episode of I See Image Drivers Edition. Today, let's get into an interesting conversation. Like I tell everybody, it's that time of year. But what I mean by that time of year is, you know how Christmas has the Christmas season, where like from Black Friday on, everybody's out shopping for gifts and things of that nature. For the car market, the car market Christmas season is tax season. And guess what? It's that time of year again. I feel like this is an interesting conversation to have because one of my close friends, he's a real estate agent. He's done kind of good for himself. The last couple of years, he's been holding back from making any major purchases. But this year, he says it's the year it's time for him to represent the success he's been having. Now, one thing about me is, and I'll admit, I love cars. And anytime somebody brings up a topic that's not a Corvette, because we kind of gravitate heavily to Corvette content, especially since I own one, I feel obligated to make a video. So we were out having lunch and he mentioned to me or asked my opinion on which type of SUV he should buy that will one, represent the status he's trying to show, two, cost him under $50,000, and three, he doesn't want older than a 2018, he's looking somewhere between 2018 to 2021. And he asked me my opinion on which luxury SUV will actually show the prestige he's trying to display and look good on 24s. Let's talk about it. So realistically, he didn't give me free reign. What he actually sat there and said was he listed five cars he was actually interested in. He said the Range Rover, the Audi Q8, a BMW X5, a Genesis GV80, and a Porsche Cayenne. Which one of these cars do you really feel like will represent the prestige or give the status of a successful real estate agent that on nice rims, which are 24 inches, will portray the message or the non-verbal message that he's actually doing very well or successful what he does. Let me know in the comments below. One of his concerns or requirements is he doesn't really want a vehicle with over 35,000 miles. So let's take a look and see how I was able to locate vehicles or what vehicles I could possibly locate to meet all of his criteria. But I'm going to start out like this. Let's look at the BMW X5. To me, the X5 is a very nice vehicle. If you haven't taken a look at one, here's the interior. The X5 comes in a V6, which is not underpowered. And in today's economy and market, it's actually a very nice vehicle. My wife has strongly considered one, too, so I've looked at them countless times before. And I feel like the X5 is actually a nice, secure, safe vehicle that's a nice luxury vehicle. But for me, I don't think it screams prestige and successful. Some of you may disagree, and if you do, tell me why in the comments below. But I don't really see somebody putting 24s on the BMW X5. So for me, that's the reason I told my friend I wouldn't recommend the X5. It's just not gonna deliver the message the way that you would wanna see it the most. I'm gonna be more transparent with you. 
So let's do it from this point of view. The BMW really does work well. I can find several vehicles under $50,000, and honestly, the 19,000 miles was the lowest I found, came in at 46, but if I got closer to 30,000 miles, I could even get the truck a lot lower. The interior is not bad, it's actually luxurious. It has a lot of options on it, and although it may not be as fancy as, say, vehicles we'll see later on, but like I said before, the BMW is truly a nice vehicle, but I just don't see it being the right fit for what we're looking for. What's up everybody? Taking a quick break for a second. I think it's the perfect time to tell you to hit the like and subscribe button. Subscribe to the ICMV Drives Edition community. Hit the like button if you like what you're seeing so far. That way I know to keep bringing you nice content like this. And by the way, check out the website. Get you some nice ICMV gear to help support the channel. We got tons of stuff out there. Oh. Let's get back to the video. So let's move on to the Porsche Cayenne. The Porsche Cayenne is a very nice vehicle. But when you get to like the base V6 version, those superchargers and things of that nature, I don't really think it really delivers the way a Porsche should deliver. The interior on the 2018 Cayenne seems a little dated compared to everything else on his list. So as you take a look at the interior of this Porsche, I'm not going to ever say it's bad because it's truly nice and very luxurious. I actually like this interior for its day, and to be honest with you, even today, I would still get a 2018, 2019 Porsche and drive it with no problems. But if I'm considering the other vehicles on this list, a Range Rover, an Audi Q8, a GV80, those interiors to me, are just a tad bit better, or should I say modern, and more technologically advanced than the Porsche Cayenne. The Porsche Cayenne, I found, was a 2018, so I was able to keep him under the mileage. This vehicle had nice options on it, but like I told you, the design to me just doesn't hit the way I feel like it needs to hit to deliver the message he wants to portray. Now, also looking at sleek appeal, I just don't see a Porsche Cayenne being a big supporter of 24-inch wheels. And I think at the end of the day, we always want to come back to these 24-inch wheels that he wanted to put on the car. I think it's a certain look he's looking for, and that image is not going to be portrayed with a Porsche Cayenne. So I feel like for that purpose, it's the second car we can remove from the list. The third vehicle I want to go over is the Genesis GV80. Many people like this car because it reminds them of a Bentley truck. For those of you who don't know, it's actually quite the same designer. So that's why it has so many similar characteristics. Genesis, as it's trying to make its own stance or break away from the Hyundai label, which it has, it's supposed to be the premier luxury version of a Hyundai. So it's a Genesis, just like Lexus is the premier luxury version for America, and they broke away from Toyota. The Genesis actually is a nice looking truck, and I feel like this may be one of the actual vehicles that when you put on 24 inch wheels, it has a stunning presence, and it may be going towards what he actually wants. But the Genesis is also one of the more higher end vehicles because it's not that old. Another problem with the Genesis, and I'm not even gonna say a problem, but one of my concerns is for the money he's trying to spend, the best Genesis I could find is a GV80 with a 2.5 four cylinder engine turbo. Now, I'm not sure what type of wheels he's actually going to try to put on this car, but what I can sit there and tell you is I wouldn't want to move around the weight of 24-inch wheels with a four-cylinder engine, and I feel like whatever four-cylinder engine is inside of this truck, the transmission is not designed to handle that type of power or that type of weight. So this just isn't the right version of the car unless he's willing to spend more money. But based off the constraints he gave me as far as pricing goes, 
the GV80 isn't a good selection. If you want to step up and spend a little bit more money, we can have a different conversation, but I'm going to stick to the parameters I was given. And so based off of that, all I could find was a 2.5 turbo four cylinder. Staying true to the rest of the requirements, this does not meet the criteria or not meet my recommendation for a vehicle that he should own to portray the best image. But again, like I said, if he wants to step up to a more powerful version, it's possibly something to consider. So now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, realistically, I haven't really given him any options. Well, let's get into what can possibly be good options. So I'm torn. And I'm torn because I don't even know how to present these last two vehicles to you. But I'm going to be open and honest and transparent. And I'm going to tell you the same things I told him. Let's start with the Audi Q8. I found a 29,000 mile Audi Q8. It was a premium edition vehicle with the convenience package. Now, it was a 2019. I feel like this vehicle definitely has a stunning presence and it has lots of technology and it's very up to date. So I feel like this is a strong bet or a safe bet to go with. When it comes to pricing, it was well under $50,000, which that was his max. Um, the mileage was good. It was under 35,000 miles like he requested. I just happened to gravitate towards white, which we discussed that many times in many different videos. But this car to me, actually works and so when I look at it from that point of view and you see them all the time it actually has a nice stance and when you put 24 inch wheels on it I think it delivers the image or the message he's trying to portray you guys let me know what you think take a look at this so right now I feel like the Audi Q8 is a very good option. You have touchscreens in the inside, you have a full digital dash, you have 3D graphics, you have high quality leather interior with heated seats, lots of functions, lots of options, a beautiful full panoramic roof, and the list goes on. And when you look at this car, I think one, for a real estate agent, this actually states luxury. I feel like if he pulls up in the Audi Q8, you sit there and say, okay, he may know what he's actually doing. I mean, let's be real. The Audi Q8 versus the Cadillac, I think there's no comparison. And it does show a transition or a progression in life. So let me know what you think of the Audi Q8 and where it ranks and how would you rank it. Right now, I think it's leading the pack. But remember, he also wants to talk about a Range Rover that brand carries a certain prestige. I do, if you ask me personally, feel like it's been diminished a little as the years have come along, as they've made smaller engines and lesser models to appeal to more of the public. But at the end of the day, it's a Range Rover. So I feel like for that purpose alone, him getting a Range Rover wouldn't need anything else added besides the fact he pulls up in a Range Rover. Some people may even look at him like he's doing too good and be concerned about him if he's selling the house. Now, if he's helping you get a house, you may feel a little bit different because you feel like, hey, he's, he's good at what he does. Now, at the same point in time, I feel like when you put 24-inch wheels on a Range Rover, which I have done in the past, I love my Range Rover, it delivers a whole nother presence, stands, and says a whole different message. But yet, this is so popular that even Range Rover sells their vehicle on 22-inch wheels, and they have so many replicas of the stock wheels in a size 24-inch that many people go out and buy it just to maintain the same look or presence. But one thing I will sit there and say about the Range Rover is when you look at the Range Rover, it too has a digital dash with 3D graphics. It also has a touchscreen just like the Audi Q8 for the entertainment system and the 
climate controls. But what you get with the Range Rover for this value, I found a Range Rover slightly outside the specs, 39,000 miles. The Range Rover was $51,000, so it was just outside his budget, but it was a 2018. And it was a V6, just like every other car, minus the Genesis that we've looked at so far. But what you got with the Range Rover was it had more options for the rear seats. You could get heated seats in the rear, and you also had climate controls on the rear. You didn't get that option with the Audi Q8. So the Range Rover to me brought more to the table. And again, its name alone carries a certain presence. But, and just like I stated before, when it came down to the GV80, is it doesn't meet the qualifications. So, there you have it. Out the vehicles he listed to me, and I told him the same thing, that the Audi Q8 pretty much is going to be your vehicle. Having this conversation with you guys, and sitting back having this conversation with my friend at Chili's, Y'all know Chili's. This is the information I share with him with my honest opinion. Before we started the comparison, I told him, I believe it's only going to come down to the Audi Q8 and the Range Rover. To me, those two vehicles alone are going to deliver the image that you're looking for. Me personally, I was looking for a reason to not say Range Rover. And based off his criteria, it allows me to say no to the Range Rover. But honestly, if you are willing to sacrifice 4,000 miles more than what you originally set out to get, if you're willing to pay an extra $1,000, which shouldn't break the bank on any type of purchase, the Range Rover is really going to deliver the presence that you want. I was hoping it would have been $5,000 more, some, some significant change that would make me say it just doesn't fit for what you're trying to do or your budget or the requirements you're looking for. But honestly, I can't deny you. The Range Rover would bring the presence. If you're looking for the best deal and still having the presence, that to me comes down to the Audi Q8. Other than a BMW and a Porsche Cayenne, which to me doesn't have the presence, those three cars were probably the most budget-friendly cars on the list. And if you were looking to stay budget-friendly and really concerned about the budget, you have to gravitate to those three cars. If you're really trying to truly stick to what you're trying to say with the live will have a certain presence, I feel like the Audi has a better presence than both of those cars. So to me, it's your clear winner. So for this video, please let me know what you guys think. Which vehicle would you go with based off what you've seen so far and the information I share with you? But the Audi technically wins this conversation based off meeting all the criteria. The Range Rover to me is the better fit. Those are the two options I would suggest. Let me know if there's any other vehicle out there you think could actually meet his criteria or be a good option. I would like to hear it. But as always, and I hope you enjoyed this video, ICMV Drive Session. Please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, join the ICMV Drive Session community. We talk about interesting topics. We talk about fun topics like this, and we try to have a good time. I have tons of content coming your way, more conversations, more interesting topics. And if there's something you want me to talk about, shoot me a message on one of my social media sites. I'll gladly make a video about it. But as always, stay safe, stay blessed, and I will see you in these streets. Peace.